So let's just start with the blog. Just like actually we did on Saturday. I will shoot you right there Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we did this Saturday. But we're going to start with the supportive bridge. So bringing that block just under the sacrum. <laughs> just to bring in this <sighs> energy of support and this energy of restoring with our yin practice. I'm just exhaling into the block, sending that exhale up the body. I'm just ushering into the evening. Maybe closing the eyes. The palms can be up or down, elbows resting, shoulder blades resting. Exhale. And as we drop into our practice, just bringing that awareness to the breath following it in both nostrils. And then just beginning to imagine that we could breathe in one nostril at a time. So just imagine breathing in through the left nostril and imagine exhaling out the right nostril. And inhaling in the right nostril. Exhaling out the left nostril. Inhaling in the left. Visualizing an exhale out the right. Visualizing an inhale on the right. And an exhale on the left. And just continue with that. Our effortless alternate nostril visualization. Just for a few rounds as we begin to settle into stillness. Settling into our passive time of the day. Integrating the hemispheres of the brain with this visualization of the breath. And calming the mind with the steadiness of the breath. Finding our center as we focus on the breath. Then begin to just breathe in and out through both again. Even if you were the whole time, just visualize both nostrils now. And then let go and just find yourself breathing that naturally. As you're ready, press those feet into the earth. Lift the hips, slide that block out from underneath, lower on with a rebound, and just continue settling into stillness. Allowing this to be a continuation of stillness, of breath. Letting the legs be as long as they can be. Maybe lifting one leg off the ground and reaching it long again. The other foot up and reaching it long. Maybe you inch those shoulder blades towards the other end of the mat. And the body is longer than it was a moment ago. Breathe 
breathing in and out and in. And then a final exhale on this rebound. Now let's open the eyes if they were closed. Gently roll over to one side before we make our way to the wall. We can come into our lizard. So maybe having both of the blocks handy within reach at least. <clears throat> and maybe finding a table to support us in getting into this lizard. So from this table, let's step the right foot forward, kind of towards maybe one edge of the mat. And then bring that left knee back a lot, a lot, or a little. And then maybe find the blocks. And let that right knee fall out to the side, the right foot falling out to the side. And you can lower down on the forearms if you want, or onto the hands. Dropping that left hip flexor down. Exhale into our lizard. Remembering that our yin yoga targeting the fascia, the connective ligaments, the connective tissue. Giving ourselves the space to be in that, in this shape long enough to target those areas. Knowing that you can kind of lift up onto the hands anytime, straightening the arms. Steady breath, just like we did in our first rebound. And if it's ever helpful throughout your practice, Bringing in that visualization of alternate nostril breath, calming the system. Integrating the sides of the body. And allowing that to be our anchor this evening. If the mind starts to wander, bringing in that alternate nostril breath, effortless visualization. We're in our, no problem, we're in our lizard on the right side, it's our first shape. The right foot forward, right knee out. Continuing with the breath, continuing with the shape. Almost near the end here. Let's gently come out of this lizard, bringing hands to the blocks, foot to the floor, knee over the ankle. Maybe send the hips back, send that right knee back, and then slowly make your way to your rebound. And we just go ahead and rebound, coming out of the belly or onto the back. Oh.
And when you get into this rebound, scan the body from the soles of the feet to the shoulders, taking your time. And then scan from the shoulders to the heels down the back body, taking your time. Noticing if the prana feels as though it's moving in a certain direction, maybe side to side or up and down. Now bringing awareness to the tip of the nose and then to the earlobes and then to the jaw, soften the jaw. Let's soften our edges here. Softening into stillness. And then exhale. Now let's draw a breath in. Exhale. And Annalise, why don't you come into reclined butterfly with your feet together, your knees wide. And Jimmy and I will come up to table. So come into lizard on the other side, opening up that opposite hip. But you go ahead and recline butterfly knees. Let's have our blocks handy. Giving ourselves the time and the space to ground that right knee and that right foot and keep that left leg forward and drop that knee out to the side. That left knee, I should say, the left, the left PK side of the foot, probably on the floor, maybe on the sole, that foot's shining towards the right side. And lower that right foot down all the way to the floor. <sighs> Allowing the gaze to drop. And inviting in the space here. And then filling that space with a little bit of stillness and a little bit of gentleness, softening our edges. Allowing this side to be different. Allowing it to be the same. So. Good job, Miss Burns. Our anchor, that alternate nostril breath, if that's helpful. Any other mindful? technique that you have in your toolbox to keep you present here. Thank you. 
when you're in the end, are you in practice is such a wonderful way to practice that all things come to an end, whether it's things that we enjoy, things that are pleasurable, or things that are uncomfortable, things that are painful, they will end. We don't always know when, but eventually the bells will ring on everything in our lives. For those of us that are in lizard, we'll bring that foot to the floor, pressing hands onto the earth, slowly sending that right hip back, yep, and then slowly kind of sweeping that leg back, come into rebound. If you're in a reclined butterfly, bring the feet to the floor and knees to the sky, and come onto the back. <sighs> allow this rebound to be exactly what it is, to feel exactly how it feels, and let go. Let's count it down from five, and four, three, two, and one. Bringing the awareness to the palms and then the soles of the feet, fingertips, the toe tips. Space between the fingers, space between the toes. And then as you're ready, let's make our way onto the front of the body unless you're already there. And from here, we're going to come into our seal pose. So we'll bring your legs really, really long. And then we'll bring our arms out, maybe to the corners of the mat. And then we'll exhale, lift the chest and the heart, and then lock out the arms. And if you want, you can kind of lower the chest down a little bit, bring the arms closer and lock them out for a little bit of a back bend on the lower back a little more. So we can come into our seal. Or if you want, you can come into onto your backs with your block and using that same setup we did at the beginning of class with supported bridge, bring this block into the sacrum and let those legs come out long. And it's the same idea. It's a back bend. Compressing the vertebrae on the low spine and we're also kind of releasing that tension on the hip flexors from our lizard shape, our counter pose, or those asanas, those shapes. Perhaps bringing in that alternate nostril breathing, but starting at the sole of the left foot, bringing the breath up the entire left side of the body in the left nostril, out the right nostril, down the entire right side of the body, and then up the right side, and that right nostril, out the left. Yeah, you got it, down the left side of the body, and just allow that cycle to flow, integrating both energy fields of the body, both hemispheres of the brain. And it's helpful, you can give that breath a color as if it were a ribbon that we're going 
up from the toe to the body into that nostril and out. Sometimes that's helpful to, to imagine that. Those legs feel a little longer. Just go ahead and stretch that toe of each foot a little longer, lifting that leg up and reaching it back. Now beginning to count down from 10 to nine and eight, so maybe the breath following each count. And six, five, four, three, two, and one. If you're on the block, bring feet to the floor, then lift those sits bone or lift the sacrum up or lift the block. If you're on in seal, just if you start to slide those hands closer to the body, bending the elbows and then lower down onto the front of the body or roll over onto the back. Finding a rebound. And it's really tempting to want to draw those knees to the chest, but see if you can resist that and allow the rebound to move into those places, into that low back probably. We'll counter that with another shape in just a moment. Drawing in this passive, receptive, thoughtful energy. And now here we're going to begin our next few shapes. We'll be on the wall. So we'll begin this kind of yin portion on the wall. So I'm going to just kind of roll over for a moment so I can make my way to the wall. Do we just go ahead and scooch down? So I'll just explain kind of where we're headed. We're going to come into a figure four on the wall. And if you don't want to do this on the wall, you can just do it just normal on your, um, your, your mat. So I'm going to just bring my seat maybe eight inches or 10 inches from the wall and then bring my feet to the wall. So I've got both feet on the wall and then I'm gonna bring my right ankle to that left thigh just below the knee, just like our figure four. So the way that we change the way this feels is we could bring that left foot lower on the wall now, or we can scoot up closer to the wall, bring that left foot to the wall and then bring that right ankle onto the top of that thigh. So when you get into that figure four on the wall, play around, bring that left foot down. See if you feel it on the out, outer right hip or on the underside of that right leg. Then maybe see about moving yourself closer to the wall. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just kind of hang out here. If you want, you can bring a hand to the heart and a hand to the belly. Maybe noticing 
with the eyes closed where you are in space, that proprioception. Do you feel that left foot on the wall? The right foot is relaxed. That's what's gonna target the soft tissues in the knee and the ankle. And then maybe noticing where that right knee is in space. Noticing where the low back is and the upper back. How much space is there between that low back and upper back? Does it feel like it's the length of the room? Does it feel like it's the actual length? Can you even imagine how long it is? Imagine your torso from the low back to the upper shoulders and just feel your torso. We'll just rest in the sensation of the back body of that torso. And then let's bring the awareness to anywhere that you feel might be a, a response of this shape, whether it's the right leg or the left leg. Now we'll come into our rebound. So since we're on the wall, we're just gonna kind of bring, kind of slide ourselves away from the wall by pressing that left foot into the wall. And then just slide that right leg off the left leg and maybe just kind of lengthening away from the wall onto the mat, coming long, long, long on the floor and feeling and coming into our rebound. <sighs> Maybe noticing this prana, this chi flowing through the body. That lower back might have taken care of itself here with that figure four on the wall. That compression from our previous shape, decompressing with the following shape. Let's exhale. And then inhale. And then on an exhale, Okay, I'll just slowly start to make your way back to the wall. However you make your way there is fine. We're going to cut in the legs up the wall. So get maybe your right hip as close to you as you can to the wall. And then lay it down on that left side. And then come onto the back and just swing those legs up the wall. So the low back and the sits bones are as close to that wall. And then both feet are just long in the heels, the back of the feet, the back of the feet, whatever you want to call that, the back of the heels, rest on the wall. That low back is on the earth. If you want, you can bring your arms into cactus beside the body.
maybe you bring that alternate nostril breath, imagining a color, perhaps it's like a ribbon, tracing it from the right or the left big toe down that side of the body, through that nostril, out the other, to the alternate toe. We cannot do this incorrectly. Our yin practice often challenges us mentally as much as it might physically to be in the stillness and the silence. That is a practice in itself. Now we'll slowly bring our arms out of cactus if they were in cactus. Put the palms down, probably beside the hips a little bit. 
just kind of slowly kind of bring those heels lower. The knees are bending. And then kind of wiggle your way away from the wall, coming into our rebound. Kind of scooching away from the wall. This is kind of the tricky part when we use the wall is finding a rebound, but it's there for us after every shape. Yeah, nice and nice deep exhale, kind of landing. And just notice where you feel that chi. Notice where you feel that blood flow again. Allowing this rebound to be exactly what it is. Exhale. And noticing the belly of the calf. And just imagine a spider web like material surrounding that calf. And that's your fascia. And that fascia wraps around every single muscle, it wraps around every single organ. And that's what we're targeting. Releasing any tension so those muscles have room to breathe, room to grow, so those nerve impulses can travel the rate they need to travel, so they can travel at all. On an exhale, shifting from our rebound back to the wall, kind of wiggling our way to the wall, coming into our figure four with the left leg on that right leg. So maybe get up as close as you want or as far away as you want. Bring that right foot to the floor or to the wall, excuse me. And that left ankle, I kind of lift my hips and I bring that left foot on there because I like to be fairly close to the wall. And then adjusting that right foot where it needs to be on the wall, bringing that seat as close to the wall as you want to begin. And then we'll exhale to drop it to this figure four on the wall. And if you want to bring your arms kind of overhead this time, the palms to the sky. Let's so make sure those shoulders aren't shrugged. Relaxing the palms, softening the palms, allowing the arm to also soften. Relaxing that left foot, the left ankle.
Aquarian energy. It's creative energy. It's the idea part of creating. So the masculine energy, that's the energy that turns the wrenches and puts the pen to paper, that pours the concrete, laying the foundation, that writes the code into the computer, that pedals the bicycle down the road. But all of those started with an idea, the idea of riding a bike, the idea of the building or the foundation. It was all an idea first. That's the yet energy, the thoughts, the ideas, the concepts. That's yen. So although our society greatly, greatly values the extroverts, the power, the strength, people that make you laugh with their loud jokes, those are all wonderful things. But sometimes those introverts, the quiet people, are sometimes overlooked or thought to be weird. But sometimes that's kind of the brains behind it all. <laughs> this is our yen, our yen practice. We need the balance. We have to have our yin. And tonight it comes in the form of this practice. <clears throat> we have to have our yin. And now, coming out of this shape, hopefully by now it's a little easier to make your way away from the wall. So whatever makes sense for you, find your way to your rebound. <sighs> Perhaps your body is still feeling the effects of your legs up the wall. It might have even felt different in our figure four on the wall after having done our legs up the wall. Yeah, exhaling and breathing into this rebound. Maybe this time scanning up the spine, guys, before just letting yourself go and just be absorbed in the rebound. Let's let go of the breath. And then do that again. And then again. And now one last time, let's make our way to the wall. Bringing those six bones kind of towards the wall. And then bringing both feet to the wall as if we were gonna do legs up the wall, but we're gonna bring those heels apart as wide as you want apart for a dragonfly on the wall. And what's kind of nice about this is that you have that support of the wall behind the feet. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna to wanna to do this all the time now. <laughs> Just let those feet rest on the wall and kind of the weight of the feet allow those heels to come apart from one another. 
and find your yin. Allowing the stillness to be the perfect place for that creative energy to blossom into an idea might come to you later when you're not in the end, but this is our conscious rest. We're not just vegging out mindlessly on the couch, which is totally fine, but this is a conscious rest. It's different. Let the feet relax. Perhaps bringing that alternate nostril breath into your space. And you might notice that as you do that, you all of a sudden are just absorbed where you don't even know what you're doing anymore. You're just existing. Allow yourself to visualize alternate nostril breath effortlessly. But slowly give ourselves a breath in through both nostrils. Exhale out the mouth. Now enter the mouth. Close the mouth, exit out both nostrils. Now inhale however you want. Exhale however you want. Maybe slowly with the hands on either side of the thighs, slowly bringing those heels in closer to each other on the wall. You can begin to bend the knees if you want, bringing little, the feet a little closer to the base of the wall. And then you can press away. And then we'll make our way to our final rebound of Shavasana. And let the breath go.
Exhale. Now in this space of the energy, if you have an intention for tonight's practice, invite that into your space. Exhale. Allow yourself to be absorbed in that intention. Allow yourself to be that intention as you rest consciously in Shavasana. Satsang 
Bring awareness to the toes and the fingers. And press thumb and index finger together at the tip of the fingers, the thumb in the middle, thumb, ring finger, thumb and pinky, and then back. Let's trace our way up the spine, imagining we could see each vertebrae. Pausing at each one. All the way up the neck. Perhaps sending gratitude for our being, for all the messages that have been transmitted along that spinal column just in the past 10 seconds. Ten minutes, ten hours, ten days, ten years, and on and on. Seeing the importance of rest. to read the quote that I sent in the email this week. From Krishna Murti. I enter fully into each experience and I come out fully from each of them too. I put the whole of me into all I do 
and out of all I do. Allowing ourselves to recharge, allowing ourselves to embrace that fire masculine energy when it's called for. Embracing our yin energy. Recognizing the need for balance. So we can enter and exit from each experience fully. And remain in Shavasana to close this continued conscious rest. Breathing in and out. And now to close. Oh, Shanti, oh.